Hello lovelies! You guys know that I am all about making life in the kitchen easier, which is why all month long I am sharing some of my very favorite quick and simple dinner ideas that are perfect for busy weeknights and that the whole family will love. And today it is all about this creamy and delicious mushroom orzotto. Now if you're not familiar with the term orzotto, don't be alarmed, I think it's actually just a made up term. It's basically a risotto, but made with orzo pasta instead of rice. Now you could use rice in this recipe, but I absolutely love the texture of orzo, and it makes this really rich and comforting and satisfying. And you won't believe how easy it is to make all in one pot. Now, to get started, I have got a nice big skillet heating up over medium high heat. And to that, I'm going to add some butter. We wanna let that butter melt down, get nice and frothy. You could do this with a little bit of oil if you wanna skip the butter in this recipe, but I find, of course, it adds richness and flavor. And cooking mushrooms in butter is one of my very favorite things. True story. And as soon as that butter is nice and melted, we are going to get our mushrooms in the pan. So I have got about a pound of cremini mushrooms here. You could use white button mushrooms in this recipe, no problem at all. Use whatever mushrooms you have. And I'm just going to let these mushrooms cook down for between five and six minutes. Usually that's the time it takes for them to start to release their moisture and they start to get nice and golden, which is what we're looking for. I'm gonna season my mushrooms just with some salt and some pepper at this point, and that's really it. We'll just let them do their thing. Now you can see what I mean by releasing their moisture. So mushrooms have a lot of water in them, and as they cook up, they release that water, and as that water evaporates, what's left behind is this incredible concentrated mushroom flavor that I absolutely adore. Now at this point, as soon as our mushrooms are cooked through, we're gonna go ahead and start building some flavor in the pan. And today I'm doing that with some finely diced shallot, some minced garlic, and some fresh thyme leaves. You could definitely use dried thyme here instead, but I love fresh in cooking like this. Totally up to you though. Now here I'm using shallot instead of onion. I really love the sort of mellow, milder flavor of shallot, but if you only have onion on hand, that will definitely work in this recipe as well. I'm just gonna let these cook away for one to two minutes until they're nice and fragrant. You wanna keep the shallot and garlic moving because you don't want it to burn. And at this point, we are ready to add our orzo. Now, orzo is actually just some pasta that's shaped really similarly to rice. Um, I love using it in a recipe like this because of course it's got starch the way most pastas do, and that starch really helps to thicken up your sauce. Once your orzo is in the pan, you wanna go ahead and add some wine to this. Now obviously the wine is optional. If you are not into cooking with wine, you can definitely leave it out. I like adding just a splash of wine because it adds a ton of great flavor and it really evaporates in almost seconds in a pan this hot. And what you're left with is this gorgeous sort of aroma and flavor that is going to permeate your entire dish. Once that wine has fully evaporated, we can go ahead and add our liquid to the pan. Now I'm using vegetable broth here because this is just one of those easy vegetarian dishes. If you wanna use chicken broth, because that's what you have on hand, of course you can do that too. Um, but the veggie broth keeps this vegetarian and just makes this perfect for Meatless Monday. So think about it. And just as soon as my mixture comes to a boil, I am going to reduce my heat to medium low. And basically, I just wanna let this cook away for about 10 minutes or so, or so get it? Or so, uh, about 10 minutes or so, um, until that orzo has absorbed all of that liquid and it's nice and tender and fully cooked through. And you'll see how creamy and delicious this is going to be. So at this point, friends, things are looking really incredible. Almost all of our liquid has been absorbed, which is exactly what we were looking to do. Now it's time to get even more tastiness into the pot. And to do that, I am going to be adding some crumbled goat cheese. So the earthiness of the mushrooms and the thyme is going to be so well complemented by the earthy, tangy flavor of this goat cheese. 
I'm gonna get it right in here and it's just gonna add a real creaminess to this. If you're not a goat cheese fan, this might be a good way to get started with goat cheese because it sort of gets absorbed into all of the other flavors, so it's not really pungent. If you cannot handle the goat cheese, it's totally fine. You could swap in some cream cheese here or even some freshly grated Parmesan would work in this recipe. But I highly recommend giving the goat cheese a try. And we're just gonna stir it in until it's fully incorporated. Now the one thing that definitely makes this sort of like a true risotto is that you really wanna keep it moving. So the more stirring you do, the better things are going to be. The orzo, because it's really starchy, likes to stick to the bottom of the pan. And of course that is not what we want. So make sure you're stirring it every one to two minutes to uh, prevent it from sticking. And plus you get an even richer and creamier texture the more you stir it. At this point, guys, we are almost in the promised land. It is time to get some veggies in here, much needed in all of our lives, at least in mine. The first thing I'm gonna be adding here are some peas. I'm actually using some fresh peas because I found them at my supermarket. It's very rare that I can find fresh peas um, that have been shelled, so I love it. You can also use frozen here. They're a great substitute. I use frozen peas in my cooking all the time. What I love about peas, fresh or frozen, is that they only take a minute or two or three to get nice and tender. So we're just gonna stir those in and let that heat get those peas nice and soft. And the final mix in here is going to be some baby kale. Now you can use spinach in this recipe for sure. Any type of green will really do. I love baby kale when I can find it. It's nice and tender and of course kale has a ton of great health benefits. We're just going to let this cook away, stirring it constantly for another two to three minutes. We wanna make sure our peas are nice and heated through and that kale is fully wilted. And then we can season this up with a little more salt and pepper and it is ready to be enjoyed. Now this yumminess can always be served up as a side dish with some chicken or some beef, but I think it is good enough to be the main event. I really hope you guys will give this recipe a try for yourselves. It's one of those ultra simple 20 minute one pot recipes that I absolutely could not get enough of. If you do give it a try, of course, don't forget to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because you know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, this recipe, like all of our recipes, is being featured on HealthyMealPlans.com, our meal planning site. If you're not familiar, HealthyMealPlans.com allows you to browse through more than a thousand recipes, drag and drop them into your weekly meal plan, and then generates your shopping list automatically so you can take it straight to the supermarket. How great is that? Thank you guys, as always, so much for watching. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.